In this video, we will look at some of the issues facing us when we have complex shapes to measure and quantify. We will begin with a revision of our trigonometry, then similar triangles, and finally rules for measuring earthworks. Basic trigonometry is the key to a lot of odd shape measurement, and measuring formwork falls neatly into this category. Starting with triangles, one of the most common uses is when we have to calculate areas either in plan or in elevation. This example is of a simple outfall structure, but there is plenty of calculations for the formwork to be done. The best way to measure complex shapes is to break them up into simple shapes. If we focus on the end elevation of this structure, we can split this up into three pieces. The triangle is the brown colour, the end of the wall is the yellow colour, and the base end is in the green colour. As there are two end elevations, our dims would be two, by 2.5 by 0.5, which is area one, the end of the wall, and two by 2.5 by 0.5, which is area two, the end of the base, and two by a half by two by 2.25, which is area three, half base times height for the triangular pieces, half base times height being the formula for areas of triangles. There are, of course, two inner triangular pieces of formwork as well, so the final dimension would be two by two by a half by two by 2.25. The next piece of complex shape to measure on this outfall structure is the inner face of the hole. For this, we need to look up the perimeter or circumference of a circle, which is two pi r. So our dimension would be two by pi by one by 0 0.5. The 0 0.5 being the thickness or width of the formwork. When you are taking off complex shapes, don't be restricted to the waist area of the description column. If necessary, use a sheet of A4, sketch out the area and divide into manageable shapes, triangles, rectangles, squares and the like. Then, in the waste space of the description column, make a reference to the A4 sheet, which is then attached to the dimension sheet itself. It's always best to keep on hand a crib sheet of mensuration formula so that you don't have to search for your old GCSE textbooks when your memory fails. Our next complex shape, or rather complex linear measurement, is related to drainage measurement and similar triangles. When we look at a method of measurement for drainage, and this is taken from SESM 4, we see the unit of measurement is linear metres, and depths from the third division to ranges from not exceeding 1.5 metres to exceeding 4 metres. Depths are also measured to invert levels. There are many cases where a given drain run will change from one depth range to another, i.e. where the run gets deeper, we may move from drains not exceeding 1.5 to 2 metres to drains 2 to 2.5 metres. And what we need to be able to do is calculate at what point in plan does that depth change to the next range. And we can do this by using similar triangles. Let us consider this elevation of a drain run. The actual pipe diameter is not relevant to the calculation. We have the invert level at manhole 1 to be 1.65 metres, which is in the range not exceeding 1.5 to 2 metres. The end of the run, 150 metres away, is manhole 2, where the invert level is 2.44 metres, i.e. in the range not exceeding 2 to 2.5 meters. What we need to do is to calculate how far from manhole 1 does the depth range not exceeding 1.5 to 2 meters extend. To do this we use similar triangles. If we make a triangle as such we have its length of 150 meters and its short side is 0.79 meters which is 2.4 meters less 1.65 meters. If we now create a second triangle, which will be similar to the first, we find we have a length of x to calculate and a short side of y. y can be calculated quite easily because we know the cutoff depth is 2 meters before it moves to the 2 to 2.5 meter range. So if we subtract from 2 the depth of invert level at manhole 1 of 1.65, we have a value of y equal to 0.35 meters. To calculate x, all we need to do is to use the similar triangles ratio calculations, which are x divided by 0.35 equals 150 
divided by 0.79. Therefore, x equals 150 times 0.35 divided by 0.79, and this equals 66.45 meters. So, for our drain run of 150 meters, 66.45 of them is in the range of not exceeding 1.5 to 2 meters, and 83.54 meters is in the range of not exceeding 2 to 2.5 meters. These are useful calculations to be able to do, and quite easy once you know how it's done. Our last complex shape measurement relates to areas and or volumes of irregular shape. There are three methods that can do this. One is the mid-ordinate rule, two the trapezoidal rule, and lastly Simpson's rule. The more accurate is Simpson's rule, so that is what we will describe here. If we look at the irregular shape, which could be either a plan area or a volume of excavation, we can see it is divided into 13 ordinates, i.e. vertical lines. Simpson's rule only works with an odd number of ordinates, and its formula is this. The area equals one-third times the width of the strips, times the whole of the first plus the last ordinate, plus four times the sum of the even ordinates, plus two times the sum of the remaining odd ordinates. So to calculate the area of our example, we would have the following. And this equates to 2,270 square meters. Let's take a few moments or two to summarize the three videos. Dimension paper is a standard in the UK construction industry and the arithmetic procedures and conventions we have to learn. They are not difficult, but remember to make your dimensions legible and to properly identify the drawings you have taken off from. Also, dimensions sheets are records and to be a proficient commercial manager, we must invest time and energy into maintaining those records. Descriptions are more than conventions. They are generally based on methods of measurement and methods of measurement can have legal identity. If your bills of quantities have been prepared under a method of measurement, then you need to be familiar with its rules so you know your measurement liabilities under the contract. Complex shapes are made up from simple shapes. Learn or have access to the basic formulae. Try to understand the ratios of different shapes, for example, similar triangles for calculating unknown side lengths. Procedures for calculating odd-shaped areas are useful for volumes too, and remember, large sums of money often hang on accurate earthwork calculations. Don't hesitate to use all the techniques together if the shape demands it. Don't rely on the waste area of the description column. Use a full page of A4 to sketch out your complex shape, then break it down into simple shapes. But let's be perfectly clear why we are doing all this. Taking off, dimensioning and descriptions are about producing bills of quantities to obtain the best possible prices. Anything that detracts from this reduces the pricing accuracy. If necessary, depart from the descriptive conventions to avoid ambiguity. Better to do this and have an unambiguous price than one that has uncertainty due to an unclear description. In the next video, we will learn how to measure centre lines of wall components.